Well, it's an honor to be here at the home of Calvin and Curly Edwards and your wonderful family as we celebrate the 100th anniversary of the birthday of Philomen Claire Williams, your mom. Congratulations. Thanks. Let me have your full name. Joe Williams. And uh, where were you born? I was born in the Kalinago Territory, Dominica. And what year were you born? I was born in the year 1955. And tell us about life in that time with your mom and dad. What was that like? Oh, life in, in a certain way was kind of hard. Um, we didn't have electricity. We didn't have roads, so to speak. Um, the only vehicles that would come to the territory were um, Land Rover Jeeps. Land Rover Jeeps. Yep, no cars, no buses. Yeah. And where did you go to school? Salibia Primary School. Yes, indeed. And give us the names of your parents and the names of your siblings, your brothers uh, and sisters. My father's name is Ethan Williams, and my mom's name is Philomen Claire Fran uh, Williams, Nee Francis. Yes. And, uh, and she was related to her aunt, uh, who was the uh, wife of uh, Lemuel Christian. Well, yeah, she... she um, referred to Mr. Welch's father as Uncle Dorville. So I would think they were related. Yes. And why, why do you think you So give us how many mothers, how many brothers and sisters do you have? Um, three brothers, five sisters. And two of your sisters are here, so I'm going to speak with them shortly. But um, so you, you, what, what work did your father do? Your father and mother, what work did they do? My father did farming and he did some carpentry as well because uh, he did a lot of work on his own house. Yes, yes. He built his house when he was growing up. And um, did, you, did you like farm in, uh, um, any bananas or just general crops? Yeah, we, we farmed bananas and other crops as well. So crops in general, uh, root crops, um, tree crops. Kind of crops. Did you all have a boat to like fish? My father did have a boat one time. Mm. Yeah. What kind of fish did you catch? Flying fish, um, redfish, um, uh, how do you call it? Mai Mai. We used to call it dolphin, but then yes. we found out the real name was Mai Mai. Mai Mai. Would you go, would you go to Uruzo often, in the capital of Dominica? Um, when I was growing up, young guy. Well, the first time I went to Rosa was, I was about the age of seven when I had to make my first communion. Mm. It was about the first time I went to Rosa and um, we'd probably go to Rosa maybe like once every six months and then as we grow older we'd probably go a little more often. That's right. You're supposed to give me the names of all your brothers and sisters but you forgot. Uh, okay. give, give that to me. My first sister's name is Judith Williams. The second child is is a son, his name is Luke Williams. My third, number three is Winifred Mary Williams. And the fourth is Charles Williams. The fifth is Katharina Williams. And um, I am number six, Joe Williams. Um, number seven is Theodore Henry Williams. Number eight is Curly Williams. And last of all, Mary Williams, number nine. Outstanding. And, and what, what was special about your mom? I mean, she's 100 years today. And, and how, 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 when you look back at it, how, how, how did it happen that she was able to outlive so many of her contemporaries? Um, she, she was a very godly woman. She, oh, she is. Um, she prayed a lot. She spent a lot of time praying. And, even now she spends more time praying and reading her Bible. And she worked hard, I think. The hard work kind of contributed as exercise. And um, I think it helped the hard work that she did, going to the garden, going to the river, cooking food, and doing all the chores. That, uh, that Someone said to me she was very kind and compassionate. Also. Oh, my, she, she, she would have a doctorate and when the Bible says, be not forgetful to entertain strangers, mm -hmm. I think she has a very high mark there. Yes. I'm going to ask your sister a few questions. 
but I, I think it's been wonderful for you to share a few words with us on the uh, occasion of your mother's 100th birthday. We want to thank you. I think you're a good example, a good example of the good parenting that you gave. Uh, you're an outstanding spokesman for the Williams family, and I know Charles isn't here, and you're doing very well. So let me go over to a sister over here. Give us your name. Okay. Okay. So what can you tell us? And, and uh, what? Where do you fall? Are you number five or six? I'm the first. You're the first. Oh, you look so young. So you're going to make a hundred. Oh my goodness. So tell me, where, where did you go to school? I went to Salibia Government School. Uh, and when were you born, by the way? Primary school. Um, I was born in. January 1st, 1944. January 1st. So you're a Capricorn. Yes, I am. And all the Capricorn people are good people. <laughs> anyway, and, and what was it like growing up with your parents in, in that time? The war was still on? Um, yeah, but I wasn't aware of that. I mean, I was just a baby when the war ended. Um, so I have no recollection that um, there was war. It was a, a wartime era. Um, but as I, I, I grew up as the oldest of my parents, very spoiled, um, because I had my cousins on both sides of my parents to play with me and pick me up and, you know, that kind of thing. So I, the first few years of my life was, was very privileged. Yes. And, and give us, your, you know, you, you said it, but you said it fast. Give us your full name again. Judith. Ella Williams. Judith Ella Williams. Viella. Viella. How do you spell Viella? V-I-E-L-L-A. Wonderful. And you went to the um, Salibia Elementary School. Yeah. You know, all the Williams family are very well spoken, very educated, very grace, grace, gracious, graceful. What do you account for that? How, how is that so? Oh, I have to give you a little joke. Um, we were not allowed to speak. Everybody in the, in the reserve spoke Creole. Um, but we weren't allowed to speak Creole. Daddy made sure of that. Um, one day, of course, you pick it up because everybody else spoke Creole. And when you say Creole, you mean broken French? Broken French and English. Yeah, broken yeah, French, broken and, French English. and English. And, and Daddy was and Mum were out in the mountains, I think, wherever they were. But they were out for the day. I was home with the younger ones. And I was. we were talking Creole. And... All at once, we just heard Daddy's voice thunder, Disa, go! <laughs> <laughs> and that means in English. <laughs> Say that again. <laughs> Say that again. <laughs> <laughs> so he basically didn't want you to speak <laughs> Creole because he thought it would spoil your language. Yes, he wanted us to speak English. That's you know, you know something? I, I must tell you all the story. The evening of Hurricane David, we had 60 people in our home because their homes had blown down and our home had stood up. And a woman came in, she was shocked, and she was speaking a lot of Patois. Uh -huh. It was dark, and about 9, 10 p.m., my father said, enough, Agnes, no more Patois in this house. <laughs> because, you know, they uh, had roots in Antigua, and they did not uh, believe in speaking Patois. Uh -huh. In fact, it's only later on, you know, they allowed us to say a few words. My mother didn't mind because she was from St. Joseph, but my father didn't want any Patois in the house. He thought it would destroy your English. Yes. Yeah, that was, that was he felt that if you go yeah. to take an exam, he said, you say to us, if you're going to take an exam, they're not going to test you in Patois. They're going to test you in English. You must speak proper English. Right. You know, but um, give us a few thoughts, a few words on your mother's life and what it meant to not only yourself, but the community. Um, Mom had kids every, uh, every two years. And there were a few of us where there were, the period was a, a little bit longer. Um, so most of her time while I was growing up, she was home. But there were times when she, if my father, if my father was out or if he was sick, um, she was the one who would do what he used to do, especially um, on the days on the, that the, it was reception, but on the reception day, um, mom, whether she was hot or cold or whether she was hungry or not, 
we we depended on the on the income from selling the bananas, and if Daddy couldn't go, she was the one who would have to go. And sometimes she was pregnant, and it was raining, and she would get up and go cut the bananas. Sometimes drag her bottom down the, the steps and of the of the muddy roads and hills. New message is received from Judge Hassan Alameen. Rivers, um, to get across the river to the place where the reception was taking place. Spend all day doing that and come home in the evening, um, pick up a few pieces of wood to catch the fire when she gets home, to cook supper for us, and then get her best enough clothes and go to the river and wash it and come back at home in the dark. That's a hard life. That's a viciously hard life. My yeah. mom has had the most difficult years of her life back home raising us. And it's so beautiful to see that you're all here with her today to celebrate that life of service to you as a mother. Certainly your father is no longer, I assume, with us. When did he pass? Uh, 1983, July. How, how old was he? 72. Outstanding. And we have one more sister here. She's right behind me. Let me see. Let me ask a few things. But tell me, how many children do you have? I don't have any kids. Uh, well, you know, you've been a mother to all, I'm sure. <laughs> but I was a teacher. Good. So where did you teach? Uh, I taught at um, I taught quite a few different places. I taught, first of all, back home. Um, I taught in the United States. Um, I taught in Antigua. And I did my teacher's training in Jamaica. And Outstanding. I taught, I taught also in Dominica. Outstanding. So you went to the University of the West Indies? No, I went to St. Joseph's Teachers College. St. Joseph's Teachers College. Would you Jamaica. believe it? Yes. That 40 years ago, this month, I was at St. Joseph's Teachers College on my way to Cuba. Really? As a 17-year-old. Wow. And we yeah, spent one good. night there, and then we spent um, one night in Montego Bay, and then we took yeah. the boat. And I just finished that book. It's online, oh my but let me not talk about me. <laughs> let me talk. But congratulations! Thank you. Thank you. And uh, you, you done outstandingly well. Very, very intelligent and gracious family. Let me Thank swing you. around here and ask a few questions. Give us your full name. My name is Katharina Agatha Williams. Okay. What year were you born in? Um, I was born in Cricket River, in the car, one of the little outlets in the car reserve. Yeah. What year? 1953, 3rd of February, 1953. Outstanding. And, and what, uh, what number did you, what, 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 you know, there are nine of you? Or what? Yeah. And what number were, were you? I was number five, mm -hmm. four before me and four after me. Yes. I was the middle one. I am the middle one. Good. And where did you go to school? Uh, I went to school at Salibia Government School. Outstanding. And what can you tell us about your mother? We've heard about all the hard work she did raising this wonderful family. Um, Mom was a very hard working person. But there was one thing that she always used to tell us to pray. Mom always tell us to pray. Sometimes, at, before she came up to, well, before we all spread out, I know she used to sometimes in the morning we would pray. So you prayed at bedtime and you prayed in the morning? Um, more or less, more or less in the, at night time. Right. Yeah. Well, listen, I don't have much more time on this camera, uh, <laughs> uh, um, but I want you to tell us a few words uh, by which we should remember your mother. She's still with us, thank God, but some words of guidance, some words of inspiration from having grown up under her tutelage. Yes, she always she always tell us to stay away from trouble. She always tell us if we know somebody we don't we don't talk to, somebody who you know who will bother us and we see the person is coming, make sure we pass on if the person is on the left side, then we can walk on the right side. We will yeah. trouble the person, do not get into trouble. Now you sound a bit like an Antiguan. Have you lived in Antigua? <laughs> I live in Antigua. Really? <laughs> That's outstanding. That's outstanding. Well, I'm going to say a few words with mom before I go. She's on the other side. I know Leah's doing a wonderful job. You want to say a few um, words for mommy before we go? Our friend from San Miguel. Give us your name. My name is Violeta Chirino. 
Violeta Chilina, la reina de San Miguel. De San Miguel. Bueno, you want, you want to say a few words for mommy? Mommy is very special lady. Mm -hmm. She was, she's so kind, mm -hmm. so nice that she was a friend of my mother. She doesn't speak Spanish and they understood each other. Oh, that's wow. wonderful. She taught Amazing. my mother how to uh, do some things that she does, you know, in um, I was amazed because my mother didn't speak much English, but they were together sitting and talking and communicating somehow. Yeah. Yes, indeed. <laughs> so, and, and this is wonderful. And your mom, is she still with us? My mother passed away oh, uh, sorry recently. I'm sorry to hear that. And All so for me, it's very special to, to be here and celebrate 100 years. Yes, 100 years. thank you very much. And we love the people of Salvador, the guy who's in charge of all fans, uh, Conrad Alfaro, he was born here, but his parents are from San Miguel. So we love Salvador. Thank you so much for your kind words. You're welcome. Uh, Miss Christian, uh, um, I know you want to say a few words. Say a few words for Grant. I want to say a few words. <laughs> say a few Why is the camera in front of me? <laughs> see, see a few words see, he had to take it off, but let me do it. I'm from the um, Grandma, oh. I want to wish you, um, I won't say another hundred, but at least ten more. Yeah. <laughs> And you look so beautiful, and I am just so impressed at how strong you are. And you know, and you're, you're just, it's amazing. I'm so happy to be able to be here today, a special day to celebrate with you. May God continue to bless you always and keep you safe. Before we go to Grandma, thank you, honey. Let's go to Auntie Curly oh, to see if you wish. Why is your camera in my face? Auntie Curly, look at the rings at you. Yes. Oh, for the say camera. a few words about Granny because you've been a caretaker. Mm -hmm. mm. And I know you're the last child. The, <laughs> the baby. baby. My goodness. Yeah. Yeah. No, there's one after me. One after you? Okay. Well, he does make his own. Future. So, Curly, give us your full name. <laughs> my name is Curly Edwards. And of course, you're the next to last challenge. Yes, I'm number Philomena, eight. And Claire. I believe very strongly in the numbers, and number eight means new beginning. Okay. Outstanding. Yes. I learned something mm -hmm. new today. And tell us a few words on, on mommy's 100th birthday and what it meant for you to be her daughter. Well, mom really is a treasure to us. It's I have watched mom, um, I have watched her over the years. You know, mom is a fighter. Mom doesn't give in very easily. Mom is the kind of person, she reminds me of, of the little two-year-old that says, I can do it, mm -hmm. I can do it, I can do it mm -hmm. by my big self. <laughs> and um, one of the things that I learned while taking care of mom is I kind of take away her independence from her. That means I have to let her do some things for herself. Some of the things I had to really face is, for example, um, to stay away from putting her in a wheelchair because if you put mom in a wheelchair that's it and I wanted mom to remain very strong to keep going another thing is um, mom likes to do little tasks because even if they have grown to that age and we think they're feeble and old mm -hmm. they still want to do something and they still want to feel they important feel they have use so if mom comes down and she wants to make a coffee guess what I let her make a coffee right. if she wants to wash the dishes I let her wash the dishes mm -hmm. Some of my siblings may not agree with me, but that's how she gains her independence. Mm -hmm. So I let her, and when we were doing nursing schools, we were encouraged and told over and over, don't stop them, mm -hmm. let them do it. That keeps them strong, mm -hmm. that keeps them feeling they're important, mm -hmm. and that Keep the they brain. were, exactly. So we don't have much time, but if you can say a few words on what grandma's life meant to you as a family, and also to the Kalinago community, where she certainly was a leader, and her son, Charles was the chief at some point, in fact, several is. times, and is the chief yes. still. Mm -hmm. yes. Mom is the core of our family. I've always said to my mom, Mom, you are the matriarch of our family, and living so long, God has work for you to do. Um, considering that all of our family are sometimes scattered everywhere, I say, Mom, you, can, you really have the power to bring your family together. God has given that to you. And I would say, you know, say to her, she has that, God gave it to her, to bring her children together mm -hmm. under her wing. Mm -hmm. And I would encourage her in that, in that sense, you know, 
to do. Another thing what I remember from mom growing up as a child is kneeling at her bedside as the children and we would be praying the rosary. I didn't always know what it was saying or doing. I didn't always understand it. But now that I'm bigger and grown, I, you know, I understand. I understand a little better what it is she was trying to instill in us, her values, her prayer life. And another thing, Gabe, is people usually ask, um, tell us your secret, tell us your secret, tell us why you, and um, <laughs> I have asked her that myself. And she tell us, um, when she was growing up, she ate very natural food, the sugar cane, the watermelon, everything was grown and produced from the ground. That's good. But I really believe what keeps mom going is her prayer life. Mom reads the Bible every single day. Mm -hmm. Not a day goes by. I mean, she really has to be dumb for her not to read it and prays all the time. So you're saying to me that faith, apart from the natural foods and her discipline, her kindness, yes. her rock, yes. her, her, her God. core was mm -hmm. her Christian yes. faith. Yes. And I just want to say that in your home, huh? you have succeeded also in having those values. And God bless you and your entire family for taking good care of this queen of all people. I'm going to say a few words with another queen called Leah, who's behind the camera before uh -huh. I say a few words to grandma. Leah, I know you've been before Thank the camera. You. Ooh, okay, somebody uh, uh, here. So, so hold, that, hold, let, me just, let, me just, <laughs> let me just ask you, so um, when were you born just before, I guess I can get this? Uh -huh. November 3rd, 1959. That's Independence Day. And where did yes. you go to school? I went to school in Salibia, Salibia, um, public school and I also went to St. Martin Primary and Vocational School. Well, let me tell you something. As far as I'm concerned, you've got a PhD from Harvard, Oxford, and Yale because you're just so intelligent in all you say and do. God bless you for all you've done and for being our friends all these years. And now I'll turn over to Leah. Leah. You want to do it on this so one? Much. Yes. Um, mommy, so um, why don't you film oh. as I... <laughs> Leah, just give us, give us, Leah, when were you born? And it's red. Is it red? Yes. Is it red? Yeah. Is it red? Right? Yes. Oh, let me get it. Actually, the one we took Actually, it's recorded. So, so Leah, tell us, tell us, uh, tell us, give us the name of your mom and your dad. Uh, my mom is Curly Edwards, originally Curly Williams, and um, my dad is um, Calvin Edwards. Good. And where's your dad from? My dad is from Antigua. And where's your mom from? My mom is from Jamaica. But your dad has an interest in history. I think he also is Kalinago in some sense. Yes, he talks about mom, my grandma, being his mom in sort of sorts because, you know, there's marriage ties and there's family ties. Yes, and, 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 and Leah, you, you're my goddaughter and I'm very proud of you. Where's that bicycle we bought you years ago? <laughs> <laughs> The bicycle. Yeah, lawyer says you oh, I, have I still have it. It's in good condition. It's yeah. still good condition. Yeah, I know because I want to be able to. Oh, yes, indeed. Sorry. Anyway, I'm sorry, Leah. But let me ask you this. Congratulations again because I remember your graduation. You were valedictorian. Yes. Okay. I, so, uh -huh, salutatorian. Yes. Salutatorian. What high school? Um, Archbishop Carroll. And you also, I remember as a kid, you were invited because you were so smart. You're one of the smartest kids in Washington, D.C. Where you were born, you were invited to the White House. Right? How old were you when you met President Clinton and his wife, uh, Hillary Clinton? Um, I don't know, but I met um, Hillary Clinton when I was really young. I remember Mom seeing the photographs. So. Yeah, I, we have a photograph in the house. And then, I, um, of all things, I met Michelle Obama. Um, during when she was first lady, um, because I was selected um, as a group of artists at an art center I go to as being a, a really good student artist, and I got to guide the congresswoman and the um, and uh, the first lady. Yes, indeed. Uh -huh. And uh, tell us where you attended uh, college. I attended George Washington University. And what did you study? I studied um, mass communications and journalism and uh, philosophy. Outstanding, <laughs> and I'm sure your honors student as always <laughs> brilliant and uh, you know you've grown up with your grandma here in this house in northwest washington dc with your uh -huh. parents and your siblings tell us if you can in a few words what that has meant for you um so it, it's meant a lot um today is grandma's birthday of course she's turning 100 um i'm 75 years apart from grandma um and it's it's meant a lot because grand, i i, I I feel like Grandma knows more about us than we know about Grandma, mm -hmm. um, but sometimes you might think it's so different because um, she's seen us grow up for such a long time. So having her in the house as a praying figure always, even though he, because you know, 
mom and I butt heads sometimes, mm. and um, mm. <laughs> and it's a very <laughs> it's it. Somebody says you know every every family has their own dysfunction. Yes. yes. So um, <laughs> so grandma was always a figure of peace, yes. and she always read the Bible, and I believe that growing up with that, um, I read at church now. I lecture, so I'm kind of like the um, I sit in at the liturgy committee. Um, Outstanding. So you're yeah. into church law. And, and you like church. a lecture. Yes, I like to read. I love the I love the word. Um, I feel it in in my in my life. You know, I, growing up with grandma, maybe it's our middle name because both our middle names are Claire from Saint Claire. Yes. Um, but growing up with that um, influence, um, I fell in love with the word of God, and you know, I let it guide my actions. So I think it's grounded me, um, and it's infiltrated its way down to my mom, um, so that she could give that guidance yes. um, to us. So that, you know, we have that foundation. So here we are having a family celebration of life, Mm -hmm. 100 years well lived, and we have the children and the grandchildren and great-grands coming. But to the broader community, to the world, if there's a message you can extract from your mother uh, and father having uh, you here in Washington, grandma, uh, Kalinago, uh, princess, now queen, what would you say her life has meant? for the world in the value system that she pursued? I think it's extraordinary. I think in a world where morality is on the fall, where people think morality is so relative, to have a, uh, a, an older figure like that, a matriarch in the world, to show the importance, not just of faith, but of good values and morality and you know old-fashioned values of being chivalrous and you know practicing good manners and, and doing what's right for other people and doing unto others as you would have them do unto you. and living to higher standards, I think that's very important as a model that that is what gives you life and that's what gives you vitality and that you should be full of the spirit and you should um, think of your life as living on long to have a legacy and to you know, influ- influence the next generation and I think of that now, having that guidance in my life. Outstanding. Can we have a round of applause folks for that uh, exposition? Yeah. Yeah, yeah. yeah, yeah. Leah, we're yeah. proud of you. Yeah. Well said. I mean, I wish I could have that printed. Maybe we will. And I'm just going to have you have us now go to Grandma so you can see a few words because we've been talking about her. So, Grandma, let's just come here, honey. Grandma, so you've heard them talk about you. Any final words? Anything you'd like to say before you go to bed? Yeah. What would you like to say, Grandma? It's 100 years. We wish you happy birthday today. Any final words? I don't know much about all these holy things, but I trust you in the Lord. Yes. So your faith in the Lord is what has kept you here. Yes. Well, God bless you, yes. and happy birthday to you. Thank you. And we all love you. <laughs> Thank you. Amen. Oh, yeah. Grandma's name. I found out something. Okay, tell us. What it means to love in the Greek. Ah, Philomena. Philomena means beloved in Greek. That's why you're beloved by all. Yes. God bless you. And because you've been very prayerful, as we end this uh, interview, let's all together, in honor of Grandma's 100th birthday, say the Lord's Prayer. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Thank you. Amen. Thank you very much.